Hi, I'm Shane Saxton, Cat People Defender and Furry Accusation Denier. Has this ever happened to you? You hear about this nifty trial for a game called Final Fantasy XIV, and you think, hey, why not? I'll hit the little download button on my console, and you finish fighting the hardest boss in the game there is, the account sign-up screen. You finally log in, and you want to explore the wondrous world of Eorzea, but you're greeted with this. Oh my eye! Well, don't you worry, buckaroo, have I got a solution for you. Hey, quick disclaimer before we get into the whole details of the tutorial on the UI. I just want to specify that when making this, it was made for primarily solo content to enhance the RPG feel and the immersion. It can be used for dungeons, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest using it for raids or for ultimates or any of the super, super difficult detail oriented stuff. That being said, I'll play a quick showcase of the before and after of the tutorial and then we'll jump right into it. This tutorial is gonna consist of breaking down into three major categories. The first one being system configuration, the second is the character configuration, and the third is the HUD layout. And you can find all of these under the system tab in the start menu. When you first boot up the game, your UI is gonna be bigger than the list of regrets starting as a monk main. To fix this, we're gonna strip away some of the elements that we don't need, scale everything down a little bit, and then finally add some transparency so that stuff in the bottom isn't as in your face as it is right now. To start off, we are going to jump into the system configuration. So to get there, all you have to do is hit start on the controller, go to the system tab, and then go to system configuration. Once you're there, you're gonna to go to the display tab and jump down a little bit. You'll see the settings, high resolution UI settings, and that is where we're gonna focus on. If you're playing on a monitor on a PC, you're likely going to want to go for HD or Full HD. If you're playing on a TV, you're going to want to go for WQHD or 4K. This all depends on what you're playing on. So while the high resolution UI settings may be more dependent on what you're playing on, the default UI size right below it with that drop down, that's more based on preference. You can kind of customize the size how you want all the UI to have a base setting as. If you want it to be 80%, 90, 100, 110, whatever it feels comfortable to you. While it's not crucial to the setup that we're working on, you can jump down to gamepad settings and there you can mess around with the icons that are showing up for PS5, PS4, or Xbox controllers, auto run, text pasting, stick sensitivity, all that fun stuff for controllers. One last little tip before we move on to the character configuration, if you use the right joystick and click it in on a controller, the window that's currently open will increase in size and it'll go through the whole scaling list. The first thing we're going to tackle in the character configuration is going to be the UI settings and specifically the general tab. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a couple different areas where we can turn off things that happen when you log in. Those being recommendations, play guide and achievements. The only one of these that I would consider keeping as a new player is recommendations. It's a list of possible things that you can do in the close locale to your character. But for me, I find it more of a nuisance than I do a help. Next, we're gonna jump over to the HUD tab where you can choose to display or not display certain HUD elements. Here, I'm going to disable the mini map, the gill, and the inventory grid. I choose to turn these off selectively because for the most part, you can find this information in other places. The inventory, you can open your inventory or your character. The mini map, you also have your active map by pressing square on the controller. And then your gill can be found in your character and your inventory. After that, we're going to jump down to the player name settings. In the own tab, this is a matter of preference. I like to choose it only when targeted. This is so that my name doesn't show up above my character and it gives it more of an RPG feel. In the next tab over in others, also a matter of preference. I have majority of mine selected into when targeted or during battle. So when we're in a dungeon or a fight, I can see the names and quickly pick out who's who. After that, we're going to jump down one more tab on the left to hotbar settings. These are the icons and skills at the very bottom of the screen, the ones that you interact with to perform actions. So when you first log in and start playing the game, you're only gonna have one hotbar visible at a time. Eight on the right if you hold the right trigger, eight on the left if you hold the left trigger. So if you wanna get a little bit spicy and add an extra eight abilities to each side, you can jump over to the custom tab and then the second option down, enable WXHB with simultaneous left or right trigger double taps. So this means that if you double tap the right trigger, you'll have access to a separate hotbar. Same with the left trigger. I understand that this can be a little busy, confusing, or even overwhelming for new players because you don't necessarily need that yet. Don't worry, you don't have to turn it on. 
I will cover some custom elements for this later on in the tutorial, but you don't have to turn this on right now if it's too much. Once you decide if you want to turn on the WXHB or not, you jump one tab left to cross. Here we're going to play around with a bunch of things to get the crossbar at the bottom looking exactly how we want. So the first thing we're going to do here is actually scroll all the way to the bottom and here we can customize the WXHB. These are those fancy extra hot bars on the right and the left that I was just talking about. We're going to choose to not always display them. This will hide them when they're not being used, but when they are being used, they will still be visible. So this can go either way. I choose to personally hide them for my setup because I'm used to my kit right now. But if you're just learning new abilities and you don't know the timers and you're, you're mixing up skills, it can be helpful to actually have this turned on. This doesn't have to do with the visuals of the layout, but if you look down, there's the input timer below that. That is the timer for when you're double clicking the triggers. If you're having trouble hitting them, you can increase the timer so you have more of a time window so you can actually get them to appear. All right, next you're gonna to wanna to scroll all the way back up to the top under enable cross hotbar. You're gonna to wanna to have it always displayed, but the rest is kind of pick and choose. Hotbar help, when you have one hotbar activated, it'll say the names of the skills. Helpful in the beginning, but can get a little muddy. Using the pet hotbar, that's pretty much class specific for the summoner. And the control guide is just the button inputs you need, like the D-pad or the option buttons, depending on Xbox or PlayStation. And then right below that is the cross hotbar transparency. Here is where a tiny little adjustment is gonna make a big difference. The first option we have here is standard. This is your cross hotbar when nothing is being done to it, when it's always on screen. I'm gonna turn this to 70, so it's a little transparent. You can still see the icons, but if you need it to be a bit more legible on a TV on console, you can turn it down a bit. Next, we have active. I'm gonna keep this at zero so it's completely opaque. There's no transparency to it whatsoever. This is when you have one selected. So if you hold down the right trigger, for example, those eight skills are easily distinguishable. You can see every single one there. Inactive is all the other skills that aren't being held down right now. I'm gonna keep this whatever standard is. So that way there's consistency and there's no mismatch in the transparency when you have one active and the others aren't. The last thing in this section is the cross hotbar controls, right under the transparency. There's hold, toggle, and mixed. I prefer and I recommend having it on hold. I find it's just the easiest one to do, especially if you're using WXHB. Now that is everything for the character configuration. If you leave that menu, you can see things already look a bit better, a bit more clear, a bit better sized, but things are still kind of in odd locations. There's a little bit of chaos going on still. To fix this, we're gonna go jump into the HUD layout and change the position of some of these elements. This may look like a lot going into it, but trust me, it's really not that bad. The first thing you're gonna do is select which HUD layout you wanna edit, one, two, three, or four. If you don't have any already made, just choose one. Right below that, you have system, hotbars, and duty. This is selecting when you want the HUD layout activated. You don't gotta worry about this. It should automatically have system and hotbars set up for you. Next is the dropdown, the current UI element. This is to select which UI element you are currently editing. When you're using a controller, whatever is selected in this dropdown is gonna be highlighted at the screen. You can see hotbar one is highlighted at the bottom. And by using the right joystick, you can choose the position of where this sits on screen. You also have the tiny little gear icon beside the dropdown. This will allow you to further specify specific things about the element that you have selected. We will use this at the very end for the experience bar. The very first element we're gonna change is the parameters bar. So if you go to the current UI element and select parameters bar from the dropdown, you'll see it sits right beneath the cross hop bar. This is your health and mana pool. We're gonna use the right joystick to pull that off to the right and down a little bit. This is gonna mimic RPGs when they have it on the bottom right or the top left. The next one we're gonna customize is the duty list. This is sitting off to the middle right. If you did get rid of the mini map in the top right, we're gonna take duty list from the current UI element dropdown, select it, and then drag it up underneath the server info so it's nice, clean, and tucked away into the corner. The next ones are specific to the class that you play or the job that you play. As you can see on my screen, I have two elements as playing as a Dark Knight. You may not have these when you first start up the game, but as you progress, you will unlock these. The names are also tied to the job as well. As you can see, mine are called the Blood Gauge and the Dark Side Gauge. The name will always be in the top left of the square centered around that element. I like to take these two and drag them down to the bottom right so they sit right on top of the health and mana of the parameter bar. This way I can still see them and look over and take a glance at the timer I have left on my gauge, but they're not in the way of my skills. Next, we're gonna take the cross hop bar from the dropdown list and shuffle it down a little bit to make up for the gap that moving the parameter bar costs. This way it's less in the way and we can see even more of the true end game fashion. 
The last element that we're going to change is the experience bar. If you select it from the drop down and then go to the gear icon to the right of the drop down, you can see that we'll be able to customize the transparency and the size of the experience bar alone. Now this is a bit of a personal preference because the experience bar is a bit more of a hype man than it is integral to combat. I choose to scale it down a little bit and up the transparency so it kind of matches the inactive set of the cross hop bar. Once you get it exactly how you want it, make sure to hit save and then back out to the regular HUD layout, hit save again before leaving, and then you finally have your immersive RPG UI. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. I hope that this UI tutorial helps you as just as much as it helped me when I first started playing console, because let's face it, oh my God, did it ever need it? And hey, if you like the video, hit the like down below, send this to other controller users, controller gang rise up. And if for some reason you liked listening to my voice and you wanna see more essays or gaming videos, you can swear your undying loyalty, loyalty to, to me with the subscribe button below. below. Until then, best of luck with your warrior of light.